says it's not worth it, yeah, it's not worth it, right? You'll get a new one. Sometimes you throw it away. All right? Well, God very easily could have done that with his creation. He could have seen how messed up it was. But instead, he decided he wanted to fix it. And the best way that he fixed it, he tried prophets. He tried to send people a long time ago to come into the world and to shape his people up like personal trainers to teach them not how to physically be, but how to be spiritually. But they just didn't get it. And so finally, after all the prophets, after Moses, after Elijah, what did God decide to do? He decided to send them to the world. A Savior, and His name was? Jesus, who was the, and is the Son of God. And He came to teach the people how to be. And you know how much God loves us? Who's not comfortable with their seat right now? Anyone want another seat? You want another seat? I got a really good seat for you. Come here. All right. Can you hold my hand? You're going to go sit right on that step. Right there. Next week, Bishop Bass will be there. But this week, you get to sit on that step. Go ahead. Sit one more up. One more up. There you go. How's that? Do you like that? That's pretty cool. You look really neat. You look really neat. That's where God wants us to be. Because in the chair is His Son. And what we heard in the epistle today is that He wants to seat us in the heavenly places where we don't deserve to be. We deserve to be like a broken toy that we said, we're going to throw it away. But our God said, no, I don't want you to go into the trash. I want you to come with me to the heavenly places where my Son sits in glory and you get to sit with Him. You like that seat? It's nice. Yes? Could be, maybe I have to get you a cushion. No? But that's where God wants us to be. But in today's epistle, He tells us where He wants us to be. And in today's gospel, He tells us how to get there. He tells us that to get there... We must show compassion. Who knows what compassion is? Like having mercy and like being nice to others and treating them like you want to Having mercy, being nice to others, treating them how you would want to be treated. Alright? Imagine being hungry. Imagine being hungry. You haven't eaten. You know, my kids say, I'm starving. And they just ate like an hour before. Not that kind of hunger. Imagine not having food for like four days. And you see someone that you know could just give you his leftover scraps. And that would fill your stomach. And you see him every day. And you say, sir, may you have something you could give me. But the man doesn't even say anything. He doesn't even acknowledge that the, sin, that the beggar is there, that Lazarus is there. But who does know that Lazarus is there? The Lord. The Lord. Who else? Jesus. Abraham. Who else? They don't have names. The dogs. The dogs. The dogs know that Lazarus is there. And it said this man isn't just hungry, but that his body is filled with sores. And do you think if a dog came and licked you, that would be a good thing or a bad thing? Who thinks it's a good thing? Who is a bad thing? If you don't like dogs, it wouldn't be a good thing. Alright, you'd be scared. But, what we're taught in the gospel is, if some of you kids, I know the adults are like, ooh, gross, a dog licked me. But some of you kids like to go up and just almost kiss a dog. But in today's gospel, it doesn't have to do with whether you're scared of the dog, or you like dogs. It has to do with the dogs showed more compassion than the rich man did. Because it said that in the saliva of dogs, there's something that kind of heals people. Especially if you have open sores. And that's what the dogs came to do. It's like putting little band-aids, like neosporin, on sores. The rich man didn't do that. But even the dogs recognized a human being in need and they tried to help him the best that they could. They can't sew up his stitches. They can't go make money for him. 
but they can offer some compassion. And that's what the dog did. The rich man did. We are in a lot of positions sometimes. Sometimes we're Lazarus. Sometimes we're the one that has been beaten down. And maybe we need a friend to pick us up. But a lot of times we're in the position of the rich man. But you and I are different than the rich man. Because guess what? We're still alive. Did you understand what happened after the rich man died? He said, please, Lord, please, Father Abraham, let Lazarus come and just dip, just dip a little bit of water into my mouth. But Father Abraham said, we can't do that because there's a great chasm separating us and we can't cross over. What that means is that once we're departed, once we're dead, we can't do anything to try to better our lives or to try to worsen our lives. We're right where we were. But we who are alive can. If there's someone at school you've been mean to, yeah, you can go back tomorrow, Monday, and say, you know what? I might not be best friends with this kid, but at least I'm going to be kind to them. If we haven't been obeying our parents like we're supposed to, we can say, okay, I'm going to try from now. And we may fall. We may not do what we set out to do, but we keep trying. The problem with the rich man was he didn't even want to try. He didn't even acknowledge the fact that Lazarus was there. You ready for the biggest question ever? I'll give you $100 if you give me the answer. What was the rich man's name? He doesn't, we don't know it. Yeah, I want to know what it was. Nobody knows what the rich man's name was. Because he didn't live up to his God-given command to be a human. To see a human standing at your doorstep begging for scraps that you could have easily thrown out. He doesn't have a name. You know, today we're going to pray for a, a precious woman, Sonia, who passed away. And God knows her name. And her family knows her name. Because she lived and she walked in the ways of the Lord. We're going to remember Archman Dreet John, who was one of the first priests here, who lived with wisdom and walked in the fear of God. And God knows his name because he on this earth knew the name of God. When we walk in compassion, when we walk in love, when we walk in the clothing that God gave us, truth and honesty, God's going to recognize us. But when we clothe ourselves in the ways of the world, and we think we're rich, but we're just rich in the ways of the world, God might not recognize us. Not that He doesn't want to recognize us. It's just we put on too many costumes. Who dressed up this past week? I saw some of you here at the church. Yeah, but you're not wearing it now. Be careful, because what the world wants to do is they want to give you a costume. Just like it gave that rich man to be clothed beautifully and to feast sumptuously and to think that this is the only thing to focus on. It's okay to dress up once a year, but we know that God has clothed us in His robes. God has clothed us in the clothing of honesty, of kindness, of purity, and most importantly of obedience. And that's what He wants us to wear. And that's what Brent Lazarus, he didn't look like he was wearing it because there were so many sores all over his body. But that's what his garments were. Whereas the rich man had put on the ways of the world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God wants us to sit just where she is. Right at his feet. In his kingdom. Where his son has already paved the way. He wants us to be there. But we have to follow on the ways of obedience and Start it by practicing compassion. Be kind to those around you. Let your words be pure. I learned a great, a great saying this past week for adults, for kids, for all of us. It says, only speak if your words are more beautiful than silence. Only speak if your words are more beautiful than silence. If we're ready to yell at someone, 
should just remain silent. If we're ready to say a bad word or scream, we should just remain silent. Be kind. Be kind. Because that's what makes our Lord see us. Had that rich man just given a little bit, a little bit, to Lazarus, the Lord might have stepped back and said, Oh, I recognize him now. But he did. But we're not like the rich man. We can become like the rich man, but as long as there's breath, we can choose to be humble. We can choose to be kind. And we can choose to see the image of Christ in all those around us. Always choose kindness, my little children. May God bless and peace.